Time to tag you. I'm going to tag you. Time to tag you. Time to tag you. Another episode of Tag Time. Welcome to Tag Studio. It's time to tag you. Another episode of Tag Time. Today I'm going to share with you the information about upcoming elections and the nomination which people are going to have for Mrs. Saga Center. I have with me the PC candidate Natalia Kosundeva. Uh, she is going to talk to you about her journey, her mission and her vision as a nominee, nominee for this PC party leadership race. Welcome to my show. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. And Natalia, you're going for the candidacy of uh, PC Party Mississauga Center. Uh, uh, why uh, it's PC? So I'm actually a nomination candidate uh, f for the Progressive Conservative nomination in the riding of Mississauga Center, which is my home riding. Why PC? Well, I have uh, conservative values. As a first-generation Canadian, uh, a lot of us share uh, values of hard work, uh, fiscal responsibility, family values. And so uh, the PC party is a natural fit for me, and I've been a strong PC supporter from a very young age. Um, uh, Natalia, when we talk about the uh, politics and leadership, there are uh, certain points which really make you go for politics. What will be your points which you will be looking forward to fix or to mm -hmm. change if you win the nomination and again the seat for that? Well, first of all, I think um, the last 15 years of the Liberal rule here in Ontario have devastated our province. We can see problems within our healthcare system, which is, you know, my number one passion because I am a registered nurse. I work in a local hospital. And so that's something that impacts me every single day when I go to work. Uh, but other than just healthcare, uh, which we are in a healthcare crisis, there are other issues that I believe the Liberal government has not been doing so well on. Uh, things like economy, jobs, uh, infrastructure, you know, creating more and more red tape, uh, making uh, life less and less affordable, you know, skyrocketing, skyrocketing hydro rates. So there are many issues that I believe we need to address in this province, and that's why I'm so passionate about running. Uh, health care and education are the two main things which which really brings the change in the society. So how do you see the educational system? So I think, um, so I'm, first of all, I'm a product of this education system. So I did my um, grade 8 here in Canada and then I uh, graduated from Philip, po Philip Pocock Secondary School in Mississauga and then I went on to, to to do my university education. I graduated from the University of Toronto uh, with a Bachelor of Science, and then I also pursued another Bachelor of Science in nursing. And so I'm a product of this educational system. Uh, so on the high school level, I think we need to, uh, to work harder because our students are not being prepared for what university um, you know, level education is like. And actually, there's, there are quite uh, large dropout rates after first year of university. Um, so at the, at, the, sorry, at the high school level, I think we really do need to look at our curricula uh, throughout, you know, mathematics, literacy, um, all the curricula. I think we need to revise them and take a deep look and to make sure that we're preparing our students for graduation and, and whether they pursue a career, um, a path further in university or they p pursue, uh, you know, the college system or they st start a job. Uh, they need to be more prepared. So I believe there's is quite a bit of work to do uh, there. This is part of our infrastructure that we spend and we invest on our youth to bring for our future, which is very commendable from. As I see you, you are a young, passionate mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. So you're doing so much and it is uh, so appreciating. Right now in the world, we are having the situation where the question of gender, especially women rights are very much in. So, and sex education again is a point of, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, I would say, uh, a lot of debates, heated mm -hmm. debates mm -hmm. in here. So how would you address as a leader if you will be elected and nominated? 
Okay, so there are two issues that you brought up here. Uh, one is an issue of uh, women's rights or women's equality, and one is an issue of sex ed. So first I'd like to talk about the sex ed. Uh, so I believe, um, you know, parents need to be properly consulted when it comes to sexual education. But I do strongly also believe that kids do need to be taught about uh, sexuality uh, at school. As a healthcare provider, it's very important to give them all the information uh, in those formative years. Uh, but in this case, I don't think Kathleen Wynne has done proper consultations and a lot of community, uh, religious communities, but also parents are very appalled by what she's done. And so I do believe in the parents' rights to you know, withdraw their children from those days when that sexual education is being taught if they do not feel comfortable with that. But I also do think parents need to be consulted. Parents need to be part of the equation when it comes to the education about sexuality. Uh, so that's th that point. But to address the point about female um, or women's equality in the workplace, uh, you know, we, we, we are on this track. We see Justin Trudeau has uh, tried to maintain a gender parity in, uh, in uh, you know, in, their, in, his, minist uh, in his cabinet. Uh, well, when we look closer, we do see that women actually uh, have received, uh, you know, smaller status ministries. They're not uh, actually equal ministries. Uh, so they're ministers of state and not cabinet ministers. So there's a big difference. But I also think that, you know, these positions should be uh, given on merit, not simply on a gender or sex. Uh, you know, as a young woman, I want to work extremely hard uh, to get to that position. I don't want to be assigned a position just based on my sex or gender. I want to work hard. I want to impress the leader. And then on that merit, uh, on my experience and my work ethic, that's how I want to get to a, let's say, cabinet position. So I think, um, you know, those women who are currently ministers, um, when they really deeply think about their positions, they probably feel like, you know, did I get this position because I'm a woman or did I actually get it because I deserve it and I, and I should be here? I am a leader in my community. So um, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, very well said that uh, it's, it's basically to challenge the mm -hmm. system that systematically if you let things happen, things automatically get correct. Mm -hmm. There is no need to address gender equality or anything mm -hmm. unless we are systematically mm -hmm. giving individual, individual right. So coming back to individual rights and coming back to the, uh, uh, um, I would say Ontario again, mm -hmm. we, are, we are having a lot of different communities here and mm -hmm. school issues are having so much trouble for uh, especially the rules and regulations and all that. So what do you see that what will you like to uh, contribute into that? Uh, you mean into our educational system? Yes, or as, as, as different communities are coming into the same school and they're having complete different understanding of the culture things and then they they are uh, I mean integration of mm -hmm. different communities simultaneously what do you think should be done so again as a first generation Canadian I myself uh, have gone through the journey of immigration English is actually my fifth language so when I came uh, to Canada I did not speak English and I had to go through ESL and the learning curve etc so I do understand the issues of you know, being in a completely uh, different society, different world, and having to adapt and going through those challenges of being in a new homeland and adapting. And of course, there is a bit of a cultural shock for everybody, right? Because we are such a multicultural, um, you know, uh, very heterogeneous society. And if we come from a more homogeneous society, then uh, we, we do need to learn and there's a learning curve. Uh, but I think, you know, the beauty of living in Canada and the beauty of being in Ontario and our riding of Mississauga Centre is a multi-ethnic um, writing, uh, you know, we learn from each other. We learn from each other's cultures, customs. Uh, we observe, and, and the more we absorb, the more we are richer by this experience. Uh, and so I think we just need to work together and have consultations to make sure that everyone is being respected and to make sure that everyone feels comfortable in the schools. I think it's extremely important. So we have to believe in Canada, that Canada mm -hmm. is the best place which we have picked to come and contribute. Absolutely, and 100%, I think Canada is the best country in the world, and I'm very proud to be a Canadian. So uh, what would you like to address our youth to look forward into and uh, to come into politics? What would be your suggestion to them? So as a fairly young person myself, I'm uh, 29 years old, uh, you know, what I would like to say to the youth, don't be scared. 
get involved, it's worth it. You never know what, uh, what path in life will take you. So I'm a registered nurse, but now I am running for a nomination. And that's the beauty, again, of being involved in community. You don't know what path in life it will take you. And I think the youth perspective is very important in Parliament. I'll tell you why. Because the decisions that are made today in Parliament uh, will impact our generation for, for many, many years to come. So I think having that voice of our generation is extremely important. And the reason why I'm running as well is to inspire other people that, you know, you can be young and you can still be passionate and you can work hard and you can run for even for a nomination and even hopefully win. So uh, I hope that more youth and especially young women, uh, you know, follow my suit because there are some societal pressures on us as young women, you know, especially during childbearing age. Uh, and there are some roles that are imposed on us as, um, as a society. But I think uh, trying to, I think women are awesome and I think we can do everything. We can be young mothers, we can be wives, and we can also be politicians. I think we're, we can do it all. So, so what, what my message is uh, to youth and to young women is to get involved. It's totally worth it. You will learn so much and you will come out at the end as a winner no matter what because through that experience uh, you will enrich your life. I wish you good luck and I hope to see you uh, succeed in your life because we need young people. We need people with fresh thought to come in and to contribute. Thank you very much for being with me today. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time. And so for, all, for those of you watching today, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I'm very passionate about what I'm doing. Uh, my tagline in this, uh, in this campaign is experience, passion and work ethic. And I truly believe I do possess those values to, to be a strong candidate for the Progressive Conservative Party in the upcoming election. And that's why I'm running in this nomination. And if you'd like to support me, please visit my page www.nataliacusandova.ca or call my campaign number, uh, it's 647-308-7685. And the membership cutoff is actually this Friday, April 6th. So please call as soon as you can. Um, I'm counting on your support. Every vote counts. And thank you so much for having me today. Thank you very much, Natalia. Thank you. Uh, viewers, it is very important that you stand with what you believe in. Our youth, our young politicians are the fresh air to breathe. Fresh air is very important for you to see the perspective where the world has reached after so much struggle. If we want to see the change, change starts with me, you and everybody. So please do come out, take in trust, know the people around you, try to pick and choose those who can best serve you. Do not think about the prejudices or the hard lines of any thought process which comes in your mind. Questions are good, but you need to search for the answer. And the answer is to go look forward the person who are actually representing you into the system. Go check Natalia and give her a feedback. Do come participate. That is your right and that is your responsibility. With these words, thank you very much for watching my show today. Time to tag you. I'm going to tag you. Time to tag you. Time to tag you. Another episode of Tag Time.